there we go into a new month. It's goodbye to January, hello to February. It's the first um, 2023. Check it out. We already made it through a month of trading, and these markets decided to be specifically directional to the upside. And we'll talk about where we think they're going to go because it is a Fed day, isn't it? So I've got my two cents. You guys are going to share here on the questions box. Please feel free to share, and uh, we'll take responsibility for it. You know the deal. So, hey, it's a Fed day, the first Fed day of 2023. It happens to be on the 1st of February. Yeah, I'm trying to make it more of an issue than it probably is. But based on where these markets at, where they're at technically, this could be a pretty impactful event. All three majors are trading around resistance levels. We'll talk about them individually here in a second. We have a very optimistic market versus a hawkish Fed. This has been the conversation since the beginning of the year, actually since the end of last year, talking that the Fed is too aggressive, they're not seeing the things that the markets believe in, this target rate of over 5% has shaken up the markets and they've corrected a little bit, and then the markets are, are trading like it's about 4%, 4.5%, we'll see. So it seeps to go forward, but the sentiment out there is confident and complacent. It's, I'm, I'm going to call it bullish at the end of this class here. But that's exactly what we're seeing, confidence and complacency. In light of some of these companies missing numbers and projecting uh, weakness moving forward. Now, what this is all based on is a lot of the slowing data, slowing in almost everything but jobs and un unemployment. The PCE number is one we talk a lot about. It's the one that the Fed really focuses on. And that number has come in uh, showing the slowing. So overall, things are looking good. However, it's those laggers there, the jobless claims, the job starts, the non-farm payrolls. These aren't going south, and I think that's where the Fed's leaning at. Now, they are lagging indicators, and we've always heard about everybody's political outlooks and things against the Federal Reserve saying, hey, you know what, uh, uh, or excuse me, the, the, the FOMC, that they, they usually overdo things, and by the time – they push the swing, it's coming back way too fast, and they cut too much, and you guys are, are not enough, and back and forth, they raise too fast. So we'll see if that kind of plays out, but that's kind of where we're at, I believe, when it comes to uh, the reaction of these markets and how they're playing it. All right, so we'll get into the markets, and I'll, I'll show you here some of the trades, or I should say the, uh, the setups that I'm seeing, but let's get into some trades. It has been primarily bullish, and a lot of these trades in the bullish area came from last week, or actually two weeks ago. So it was two weeks ago we found them. I showed you guys them last week, and here they are again this week. And I'm talking about the bull side. On the bear side, ADT and PEP carried over as well. Sideways, SPY and Alcoa are looking pretty good. I'll get to these in a minute. I didn't get to do all the bull side, but it is this d diagonal boring bullish thing that if, if we had stuck with it and we have been sticking with it that has done really really well so here is Boeing we talked about this uh, a couple of weeks ago I believe back in this area where it was either pulling back or showing that it was going to move higher and look at today a little bit of a head fake so far a uh, good shoot up here and then it's come back down but I do like it um, I, I imagine this would be its earnings a little while ago so it did pretty good it's got a nice high tight base up in here uh, so I do like it as far as diagonal or even bullish to the upside. If we didn't have the hunter, you know, the elephant in the room or the grill in the room or what do you guys want to call it? You can call it whatever you want, which is the Fed <laughs> announcement today. That being said, if it is bullishly accepted or taken bullishly, and we're, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I expect, then this would be a nice move uh, to the upside. Definitely have to vertical or diagonalize this. This does get expensive, but it is Boeing, and they have a lot of choices on their option side. So let's move over to our next bull. This is AMAT, Applied Materials. This was also one that we talked about. Let's see, right about, I believe it was this candlestick. Sorry, folks, or pretty close to it. I know that we we're talking about, hey, it's breaking above this 110 range, and it did. It actually should hit the uh, 115. It pulled back again. And then now it's right back up there. So I do like it. Same scenario that we had it a week ago, just in a different price range. Also, vertical spread, diagonal spread. Uh, hedge this out a little bit. We'll see if, if uh, the markets like whatever number is about to come out. All 
right. Now, I decided not to go because we looked at all of these last week. Boeing and AMAT were both last week. So I went ahead and skipped out, and I found – or skipped – went a little further back, and I found Rider Systems you guys had brought as well. I like it. It's got a nice high and tight base going on. It's the same as always. If you were to fall backwards into your plus one specific trades, whether that's a – in the money vertical spread or a diagonal spread or a targeted butterfly or a butterfly just slightly at a, at a target just a little higher any any plus one scenario you have I still think would be working uh, in all these situations so I do like it nice little break here maybe above that 96 whatever this is up in here in a target of 100 if you wanted to go that route uh, for the rest of the month but you got to check earnings on these as well but man I, I, I've been seeing a lot of stuff being the initial reaction is bad, and then it slowly just starts to creep up. So let's move over to the sideways, and I'm going to get into this chart a lot more in depth here in a minute. But we do have the SPY chart, one that I agreed with you so much, I came off the sidelines and took myself a 400, 390, 410. Um, loved it back when we talked about it the first time here. I still like it, even though it's playing up against this 410. This is one that if this becomes a non-event, We've had some Fed meetings, folks, where we the Fed says one thing, the markets react a certain way, but it wasn't bad enough or good enough to actually do anything. We just kind of meander sideways. That could very well happen. Or we could get that shot up here that um, Corey's been talking a lot about. Or we've talked about the ABC correction in the uh, Elliott Wave Theory. And then we come right back down. And my idea is to actually hit that in the next week and a half. So I don't care if we go nowhere for a little bit or shoot up and come back down. Yeah, we'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll bring that back up again here a second as soon as we get to the, uh, uh, the, main, the indexes again. So that's uh, SPY. Great trade brought to you by you guys, right? Here's Alcoa. We're thinking of this as sideways. It did have these, this inside day, which I thought was pretty interesting, or I should call it a bullish engulfing candle pattern, right here the last couple of days. And today, it looks like it's just kind of parked itself. So I like it above the 50, and I do like it below the 58. I know that's a pretty good size sideways range, but it's this little blip here. And it, it hasn't finished yet. It could, it could float higher, which would put me into this, okay, sideways, because there's a pretty good support level at 50. And even if it broke 50, we've got a 50-day moving average at 48. So sideways on Alco, I believe I had it. Let me look. Yes, it was a sideways to up because of maybe if it could break. Let me get rid of uh, some pen here. If it could break the little hump that I drew above this area, then yes, then I could get it to the upside uh, either way. So sideways to up, but it is on the sideways list for me for right now. Let's get into a couple of bears. This is ADT. Also a really great trade that you guys were talking about. Beautiful breakdown here. I believe we talked about it right around this mark, breaking the 850. And it's it's just done this a little anemic consolidation, maybe a little bit of a bull move or bear, excuse me, bear rally. Couldn't even quite get up to nine there. So sideways to down. If this rolls over that 850 mark, we're still in business as we talked about last week. So anybody that's in a diagonal put spread on this, you're doing really well, especially if you got into it when we talked about it last week. So I'm, I'm loving this. I'm loving everything I'm seeing. Um, the trades are all working out. It's almost a shame that we have a Fed meeting come up, right? <laughs> Hold on. To kind of uh, uh, ruin everything. All right, let's move into PepsiCo. Nice breakdown. A little bit of a ra uh, bear rally, and it just hasn't gone anywhere. This is one that just pinned itself. Another that if you guys were in the um, a, a diagonal put spread. It, it's still doing really, really well as of a week or two ago. So, and I still like it. So, geez, man. Okay, so there they are. Let's see what's going on with our markets. I'm going to break down kind of what I have, and then I'm kind of anxious to see if you guys got any trades to look at. These are difficult days because of the potential volatile move that we could get after uh, the Fed says what they're going to say in the market's reaction. So overall, eerily, the exact same performance we had last week. And I, I ran these numbers and double-checked because I would, 
I'm trying to do two things at once sometimes, and I took a look because the, I believe the Dow was down 0.38% this time last week. And the SPY was down 0.09% this time last week. So these numbers are almost exactly where they were last Wednesday, and it threw me off. All save, but um, the, Rus or, uh, the, the Russell, it was um, a little bit higher. But it's a 082 oil's down again, 2%, gold's flat. So this is just hold. It's in a kind of in a holding pattern, waiting for an event. That's kind of what I'm seeing here. I haven't really gained or lost anything. I'm just kind of pushing sideways. So let's get into the SPY in a little bit bigger of a, a chunk here. And I'll just kind of go back over it. Expectations that I have, and I, I did got, I got to do, boy, I've done a lot of classes this week. I got to do Monday and Tuesday's end of day, and I get to talk to you guys again today. So nothing's changed. I truly believe that if the Fed comes in dovish, I'm not sure if the markets are going to take it as bullish. Um, Corey, Corey on my class here, uh, sent me a great email, one of, one of you guys, traders, saying that, you know what, the, the Fed has always thrown a wet blanket on things. And I like the analogy, I said a wet blanket. And I, I thought about what, what he said, and I, I realized that wet blanket is the force that I think is driving this bullishness. The fact that, oh, they got it wrong. They're, they're overdoing this. I'm going to buy. I'm going to buy. So it's this kind of, you know, if you yell at your kids not to jump on the bed, and then as soon as you walk away, they're going to jump on the bed even harder. You know, it's this, this defiance. Okay, there's my little conspiracy or my, my idea. So if, if, if we get what we want, if the Fed says, you know what, hey, we're lightening up. We're going to take the foot off the gas. Maybe the markets become like, uh-oh, well, now what do we do? So that's the expectation of this kind of blow-off top. And I like the fact that we talk about the ABC pattern, and we have not had a blow-off top. And until we get a blow-off top, we are, we are going to stick in this dull, boring market that uh, Corey and Rob like to refer to as never short a dull market. Well, once it gets excited and, and shoots up and goes crazy, we get that blow-off top, which now we can have a bearish move. So I'm just not sure if that's going to come in spite of the Fed or with the Fed. I hope that makes sense to you guys. So I'm looking for whatever the reaction is to whatever the Fed does. I don't care what the Fed says. I don't because the funny thing is I've been pessimistic and bullish or bearish, excuse me, for a long, long time. And, and it makes sense, right? I see the recession coming. It's going to happen, right? Maybe it will, maybe it won't, whatever. But the markets don't care. The investors don't care. People buying this and pushing the markets don't care. So my attitude is, okay, until they're done, until this uh, blow-off top happens, then I can't be bearish. So we'll see. We'll see if it's going to be a, a move to the upside or downside. So that's the first scenario. The other scenario will be the Fed says we still see, we're still hawkish, we're still worried, we raise the 50. Uh, we are going to keep the foot down until we see jobs and um, employment go the direction they want to see. The markets take it as, well, they're wrong. So we have the initial move down, something like this, and then we do this again. So it's just going to be a technical game for me. Um, and, and this might come late. You guys have seen that. Okay, there it is. There is our, I feel like I'm, I'm prepping you guys for a football game or something. Jeez, now let's get out there. Okay, just kidding. Okay, so that's kind of what I'm seeing. But you can see that these markets are absolutely perfectly set up for this. They're ready. They're, you got this crossover going. You do have a stair step from the upper part. I mean, you could you can make an argument of an upper channel going on. Well, actually, that's kind of spreading. Um, but I, I'd say more of an ascending triangle pattern above moving averages. And it could break either direction. Great. Okay, let's get into the diamonds and the Qs. This one is a lot more of a symmetrical triangle pattern, but I like to do my symmetrical triangle patterns in the direction of where it is in correlation to its moving averages. I know that sounds pretty easy to think about, and it's, it's still a coin flip, but this is technically consolidating above its moving averages. It looks like the 50 just crossed below the 20, or I should say the 20 above the 50. So it's a little bit more bullishness. Uh, it's got the symmetrical formation here. We do have the symmetrical volume. Also another one that's just ready to uh, make a move. Whether that's up or down, um, I'll lean towards up just because of the pattern. Here's the cues. 
this had the strongest move off the bottom and it did come off of previous lows where the others have set higher lows before they did that. So keep in mind the Q's started its March in January from its lows. The other two didn't. The other two started from higher lows. So this had to retrace quite a bit more. I do think there's speculation in, in this, uh, in, in the tech sector. I truly do. Buying off the bottom. A lot of these tech companies are laying people off, saying it's going to be bad moving forward. And uh, here we are in spite of that. So, but it's up against resistance. Ready to jump. Okay. Moving forward. Get to our economic reports. So, none, nothing on Monday. Case Shiller home prices going south. We know that. We knew that was going to happen. It's it, the cause and effect when it comes to something is as black and white as home prices. It's easy. You raise interest rates. It costs more to borrow money. Homes are already expensive. They start to balance each other out. And it, it works every single time because it's at the consumer end. Right? Okay, the house is no longer five hundred thousand dollars it's now four hundred and fifty thousand but the cost to borrow literally just doubled or even tripled in some point so it's okay i'm saving fifty thousand dollars on the house but i'm going to spend an extra three percent four percent in interest and it's really easy math we can all do it and so it works it balances itself out the adp employment report so this is actually a bullish indicator for the first time the expectations were uh, from a drop from 253 to 190, and it went to 106. So maybe this is that first sign that it's starting to catch up and starting to fall. Job openings remain pretty much in line. Quits, I don't even know how to read that because it's been about this 4.1 million for a long, long time. Construction spending is dropping, all of that stuff. Okay, what is the big thing that we're worried about or, or thinking about? There it is. The motor vehicle sales for January. Joking. Sorry, I've just taught this class too much. I thought I'd make a joke. All right, the Fed's fund rate. There it is, 4.25 to 4 to 4.50. So it's a quarter point. Is it going to be 50? What are we going to do? Uh, and more importantly, what are the markets going to do? Now, past that, now that I've showed you that, let's get into what's left. Non-farm payrolls will be big, but it's, since it's after an FOMC statement, it might not carry the same clout. Maybe it will if it's made mention in the the, uh, the comments that Powell will do after he makes his announcement saying, we're really focusing on non-farm. Well, then everybody will focus on this. Uh, but I think he's still using that PCE. The expectations are for quite a drop. Look at that. So uh, if we come in line with that, um, that would also be another uh, push that things are actually slowing down. Okay. There it is. You're welcome. Up, oh, just went ahead. I'm going to share mine first, and then I'll go to yours second. I'm a zero, and if you guys have been wondering, it's it's I've been bouncing between this and this and quite a bit, and the whole idea is because of this consolidation I see up here above this um, resistance. So we have this ascending triangle pattern, and I know that this is the big one that I want to break, but this last few days up through here has bounced me between zero and plus one. My plus one for the monthly outlook hasn't changed. What does that mean? Well, if you've been diagonally bullish for this whole time, you're doing pretty good. Even if you go to plus one to zero, plus one to zero, uh, it, it shouldn't matter in the you know week to week because we're really just kind of going sideways to slightly higher. Now that could completely change in a few hours, right? So <laughs> we'll just keep an eye on that. All right. Now, since I showed you my card, that's fine. Let's go ahead. And I took the time to build a new poll, and I didn't even use it correctly. I apologize. Let's launch it and see what you guys are thinking. We'll go from there. All right. Move it over. Cool. I, I think everything around here or everybody around here is pretty much feeling the same way. Hey, until the markets roll over, there's plenty of bad news and worries and fears out there that justify us fallen another 15 20 percent or not that much but we will roll over and crash right but until that happens or if it ever does we just kind of have to trade the markets in front of us so we'll see okay cool 100 percent voted everybody hit a button today how many people do we have out there today yeah we got the same handful of people that we're used to let's go ahead and close this and let me share it 
And there it is, plus one. Hopefully I wasn't leaning by too much, but based on the conversations we have each week, I imagine we're pretty much in line. 43% at a flat, 71% at plus one. So we're all in agreement that overall, technically, or the way the chart is, uh, makes sense. Makes sense to be that plus one. And we're seeing it in our trading. We are. So awesome job, folks. Thanks. Now, you know, if we can just get through this Fed day without too many things happening, uh, we'll see. Sector analysis-wise, not much has changed. Oh, I didn't update these slides. I apologize. I did. These are wrong. Um, these guys are wrong. But I do have the correct charts. So let's get to those first. So, I'm sorry, guys. Let's get ahead. There we go. Consumer cyclicals leading the way this time. Real estate looks like it's just a little bit of balance. Communication services, of course, been been in the top five. So technology and communication services has been in the top five for a while. Right for a few weeks, energy slipping pretty hard today, or the, from Wednesday to Wednesday, uh, down almost two percent. Healthcare sliding, but not much. Everything else is doing pretty good in general. Um, I think that continues. I do have the correct charts since it is the discretionary. I decided to pull the IYC, and what's cool about this chart is you can see it generally just jumped out and stayed out. Right, it had this really cool bounce off of its support level. Nice crossover back in this area. Didn't spend too much time at the 62 mark. Put its head right above this uh, 63. So now it's toying with stuff that is it's been playing with back in uh, September of last year. So it is showing a, a little bit more strength. And when you talk about consumer discretionary, this isn't a this isn't an ETF that's behaving like it's expecting a recession, right? Discretionary is stuff that we can go without. But look at it. I mean, it's just surging higher. This isn't the behavior of, well, I might lose my job and I'm going to have to cut back on spending in the next six months to the rest of the year. That's not what this is behaving like. So it's kind of hard to kind of read the tea leaves when you're seeing this kind of action. And what's really cool, folks, is that we always all have a discussion of one of my favorite things is it, it's it's in the it, it, the proof is in the price action. So I could say this, I don't believe that, this isn't going to happen. And then if you see where I put my money, that's exactly what I believe. So when I see this money going in there, I'm not sure if this is speculation, but I don't see a lot of fear uh, in a move like that. So let's get to XLE. This is energy, and it does appear weak, right? We saw that it's down about 2%. It's just a pullback. This is just a pullback. You know, I would expect something to be a little bit more of a breakdown, with that same situation. Hey, we're worried about a recession. There should be less reliant on growth and expansion, so we're going to consume a lot less energy. We should expect this to to, to fall apart. Uh, it looks to me like it's just a pullback. So the markets are definitely behaving differently than the picture that's being painted by uh, some of the economic numbers and uh, you know, what the Fed sees. Right? Kind of fun. Well, where does that leave us? Well, it leaves us up in the air, but... What I think we will be doing is technically technical indicators. Let, we're going back to bread and butter. It's the third bullet point there on the market. So we'll start. Let me just give you the overview here. January gave us a very specific move upward to long-term resistance, um, upward to those resistance levels, and it didn't take long to get there. There was a little bit of a hiccup last week, big red candle, and it was immediately erased with some gaps and, and a pushback up there. But it, it got back there like it was on a mission. So here we are. We're right up there at a perfect time, the Fed meeting. Company earnings are not great. Uh, companies did come in line and did beat, but they're already in lowered uh, projections. There are worries into the next quarter. There are layoffs, big amounts of layoffs across a lot of tech companies. And uh, yeah, sure, it'll take care of their bottom line moving forward, but that might be some of the worries that um, uh, people that are worried about an economic slowdown are looking at. Where, where I'm going to put everything here is technical indicators. And I struggled at the end of last year, the beginning of this year. I'm absolutely just going to get back to bread and butter. Price action's up, I'm buying. If price action's down, I'm, not, I'm selling or I'm not. I'm just going to, just whatever's in front of me. So it's going to be the best after this volatility settles, if we have any. I remember the first thing I discussed about was just in case the markets get, the Fed gives the markets what they wanted to hear, it becomes this, well, what do we do now? Great. Okay. So they see that it's slowing too, and it's not going to be uh, at a five plus percent. 
rate, it's going to be it's going to be somewhere around the four four and a half, which we see. So now that they now that the Fed agrees with the markets, what do we do? So that's kind of that uh, sit and pause and wait. So we'll see once that settles. I'm going to take a look at uh, where we go. Sentiment's definitely bullish. It's been bullish since the beginning of the year. Um, economic data, the FOMC statement period. I'm not going too far past that. Okay. Short and sweet this time. Under 30 minutes. I just wanted to make sure we had enough time to go out and take a look at some of the trades you're looking at. And uh, cut you loose so you can sit back and watch the, the exciting life of the Federal Reserve. <laughs> Or, excuse me, the Federal Open Market Committee. Uh, it's a joke. It's so boring. Okay. Oh, there it is. Rolling over. Rolling over a little bit. A little bit of pessimism. Going into it. I don't think it'll stay. I think it's just, a, to tell you the truth, it's probably just a lack of buying, uh, knowing that we have that uh, this event coming up. So, All right. What do we got here? John, let's start us off with Crocs. I still have yet to buy a pair of those. I know they've been around since the 90s, right? Late 90s, early 2000. Everybody raves about them. Let's see. Oh, very nice. So looking at the bull call spread, 120, 130. I like this pattern. I do. And if it could consolidate, or, or I should say stay right on that 120, that's cool. 130, good target. It's got a little bit of a bleedy pattern, but it's sitting right at... The 20 day moving average, sorry folks, what is the bleedy pattern? <laughs> it's almost, well, it's actually bullish in the long term. It could be a flag pattern. And I'm taking a look at a little bit of this movement inside, like this gap up, back down. So it's a, it's a, it's a channel. It's hitting support and resistance levels. If you guys had Bollinger Bands, this would be easier to see. But this could be a bullish flag pattern. Sometimes these will need to go further down. I don't know about all the way back down to this area. But maybe, I don't know, maybe if it consolidates here or if it breaks above this area, then that could be a good trade. But I do like it uh, on the bull side. So, thanks, John. Good stuff. Do you own a pair of Crocs, John? Or is this just a chart? All right, just kidding. Let's get to who's next here. Dan. <clears throat> John, just a chart. Just want to make sure that everybody knows that John did this for the chart. He doesn't like or dislike the footwear. Very, very, very uh, Switzerland of you there. All right, let's get into Dan. Tomorrow to Fed, look to get back into silver. Let's take a look at it. They want us to do a sideways trade at 22. Let's, oh, let me zoom in first. Okay. All right. Cool. And it involves a butterfly. So it's 22, 23, 21. Oh, that's too low. That's right. Forget this line, folks. I can erase it later. Okay. Yeah. So, so after the Fed stuff, he's going to see what settles and then maybe play something a little bit more sideways in silver. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. You know, I've, I've noticed that you know, com commodities, they, they trade 24-7. Eh, well, not quite, but basically. So there's a lot of, they, can, they absorb a lot of volatility and reactionary movements. But then again, overnight, they seem to really kind of settle, go back. I mean, gold, whenever I look at gold, gold's just this meandering, slow-moving little monster here. But then if you look at the chart, let's pull up GLD just for fun. You can see that it actually moves pretty decent. I mean, that's a pretty, well, let me get to it here. Zoom in. I mean, that's a, this this thing kind of sneaks up on you. See how it gaps all the time? It's because it's trading all the time. So I look at it and said, oh, it's only up 0.8. Well, that's because it's, its first 2% was overseas or overnight while I was sleeping. But as of late, it's doing very much the similar thing as silver. And this is absolutely just sitting back and wondering, look, how much is the dollar going to be worth after whatever the Fed does? Is it going to be worth a half basis point, a quarter basis point more? What is it? So it is just waiting. But yeah, I, I like it. I like sitting out and waiting for it to happen and then uh, make it a trade. Thanks, Dan. All right, Joel. Joel's got 
H O N. Let's move this over here. All right. Oh wow, neat. Bear put trade for next week expiration. Um, sure, love it. This is cool. I like the trend. I like it. Comes back, falls apart, setting low. Come back right on that lower 20-day. Nice big red candle today. Now let's see if it breaks that uh, that uh, the 204 here, right back to 200, maybe even further. I just like where it's going. This expanded range. So if any of you guys are uh, charting junkies, the expanded range just shows volatility and direction. It's tough when it comes to um, choosing targets because it is expanding, right? We like to see them tightening. Bollinger Bands hate this <laughs> because uh, they, they'll exceed it here and then they'll exceed it again there. And then by the time they readjust, this little move here isn't even close. But as far as a bear rally into a downtrend, that's nice right on that uh, moving average. I like it. Thanks, Joel. Awesome. Okay, and he went on to say that looks like he's got earnings tomorrow, and he does. That's fine. That's fine. You could still play this with an earnings play. I mean, after this last drop, you could flip a coin on it, just do a bearish spread on it, see what happens. Um, we'll see. Thanks for the heads up, though. I do like it. I'm going to write it. I wrote it down anyways. I'll put an asterisk. There we go. Just to remind me to remind you that it has earnings. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's actually a pretty good idea. Has been decided. Asked, uh, hey, maybe I should do two polls: a market direction and a monthly direction. Well, that's yep. Yeah, that's not bad. Let me write that down. Are you guys okay taking two polls? I'm okay with it. Let's write this down weekly. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'll browse around, see what you guys think. Great suggestion. All right. Sebastian's got... Here, trade first. Sebastian Oracle. March, 85, February 10th, 91. Diagonal call spread. High base. Cool. All right. Let's see. Let's make it look like a high base. There we go. Clean it up. It's funny when you zoom in on a chart, you can actually increase it and expand it, and it doesn't look the same, right? But I do see this for sure. Nice little high base there. Looking at a... Sorry, I just lost you. Let me stretch this out. There we go. 85.91. Yep, he's in the money there. Selling right at it. Cool. I like it. Mm-hmm. Look at that little ascending pattern going on through here. Nice. Okay. Uh, slow playing it with a march. You could sell it again and again and again. Considering after the FOMC or the last 30 minutes of the day. For sure. See how the reaction, where, where it goes, where it takes you. Mm -hmm. Oracle. Man, that thing's been around a long time. Let's see. AFL. 71, 73, 75, Butterfly. Aflac, yeah, look at that. Look how long that thing's been pinned. <clears throat> All right, let's draw some lines here. Ooh, it's tight. Yeah, not really, 71 to 75. All right, right about there. Just over here and right through the middle. That's, yeah, I got it close. I like it. AFL. Cool. Sideways trade. Um, let me scroll down and see. Oh, aftermarket close. It's got its earnings this tonight. So if uh, all goes good, Brett, might be something to jump into. I'm sure it'll gap up or down, but sometimes you can have a gap up, retrace, gap down, and move higher. Stuff like that might be pretty cool. <clears throat> Okay, where am I at? There we go. <clears throat> August. Where 
years, two years. Okay, okay. Sebastian's got this idea of the SPX, and I have to use the SPY, but I, the charts are similar. Um, um, do, do you still feel that the SPX will touch or surpass that August September high, back and through here? Um, it, that would be a blow off top to me. It it's one of these things, and what's tough about it? Oh, geez, I, you bring up such a great conversation point. Let's do this. It's it's one of these things that if if we hit this and then fall apart, right? The idea is then we are just going to be stuck in, and we talked about this at the end of last year. I, I'm not sure if it was the projections for 2023 that we might just trend painfully sideways for months and months and months. I truly believe that that would happen. I don't think that this, if we, if we stop here, and this is just my personal opinion, and I've seen it before, if we stop here, then I just don't, we'll never really sell off or we'll never really make anything. We'll just kind of meander. And the reason being is because this move, although it's been pretty stubbornly bullish, there's nothing behind it. There's no euphoria. There's no excitement or or kind of like the things that we saw in 2020, 2021, where when the markets broke out, they broke out and just took off. And then when they had the retracement, they were so far up that the retracement was just nothing but an aggressive pullback. So my expectation is I'm looking for that or what I want to see, I should say, is I'm looking for that blow-off top. And yes, it could hit these uh, August highs. If we, or yeah, August or even the September highs. I believe he said August, September. Yes, and it would be maybe one or two candles up to this. I'll use the SPY, the 420 mark here. And then it would be uh, you know some, some something similar to this. A gap up with a huge drop down. Blow-off tops or a piercing line are really easy to identify. You get a big slope in volume and you get candlesticks that progressively, let's see if I can, let's see how big of an artist I am, that do things like this. Lots of like Maraboza retracements, right? Big, each candle gets higher and higher and higher. Maybe I'll put a little shadow on it. And then you get an open here and this becomes a huge red candle. This is also called dark cloud cover right a piercing line with dark cloud cover it's just an explosion to the upside let me zoom in because uh, this is actually a pretty good example of it right here imagine imagine this pattern well this this pattern with a bunch of green candles in front of it that go above your September high now that is exhaustion that's a blow off top that is everybody that's in everybody that says okay I'm confident, I'm comfortable, there's no recession, the world's fine, they're in. Once that happens, then all that's left is nobody buying it. And that's kind of what I'm looking at. That's a, it's a fair question that you ask, and it's, it's kind of a speculative question to answer. So hopefully you guys don't see it as, boy, he's crazy. Uh, it's, just, it's kind of something I'm looking for. So that would be nice. And that would also confirm that ABC pattern that Corey's talked about in the... Uh, um, with a, it, regards to the Elliott Wave. But fair enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's keep going. Boy, you guys, we got all sorts of comments going on here. I got to do a lot of reading today. I should have worn my glasses. Uh, great question, by the way. Thank you. All right, Matt's got a little comment. 11 months of the year, more than 85% of the time. Average gain is about 11%. Okay, sure. You know, I won't get too specific with that, Matt. Um, um, uh, kind of the example you had without, because it's just a little deep, but I like it. But he, you, your summary, if I can read this, January historically a good indicator for a year, and January 2023 was up. Absolutely. So, if this is any indication of what we could expect for the rest of the year, and that'd be fine. And, and um, there's all sorts of cool conversation points. And Matt brings up uh, a couple things about, hey, since World War II, the third term of a presidential year, and all sorts of cool things. Those are always great to, to take into consideration. However, however, what I want to see is the acknowledgement or the, or, or the flat-out just ignoring previous resistance points from situations from the past. This is a beautiful bull move that we've seen since January. Where we were economically a year ago, two years ago, completely different. Completely different. 
So do the markets acknowledge that or ignore that? And, and what's really cool, folks, I don't really have to, I don't have to know. I'll just follow whatever the chart does. So also another great point. Thanks, Matt. Okay. Man, this is getting, this is like Joe's economic political corner. Sorry about this. What? <laughs> I wish we had more trades. <laughs> okay. Peace on Panda Space. Okay, we're vision. Okay, cool. Okay. Cool. Looks like we're about finished. Um, let me summarize this, our trades, and I think I got to everybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Sebastian's like, hey, what does the team think about a virtual summit? And man, I, I'm for it. I just don't know if uh, it's something that we would put together or do. I I haven't sent it up the chain yet. It did come up on a, a topic once and uh, just kind of got, you know, it's me. I'm like, oh, Joe's up in the night. He's just babbling again. But I can bring it up again because I know that we're going to talk about it each spring and each fall. We used to do them in the spring and the fall. Um, and I know that we do want m more connection uh, versus just you know phone calls, coaching sessions, emails, stuff like that. Um, it's just a lot better. But, uh, yeah, I'll bring it back up for sure. All right. So just a few to look at. Thanks uh, for reminding me as well. Okay. What do we got? Here is... Uh, the trades we have, not a lot. They're all good. They're decent. Keep an eye on it. Um, let me get my asterisk. Honeywell does have earnings tonight, but I do like it even as a trade because it was consolidating as a high base. So if you wanted to throw out a couple of bucks out there and just see if it'll break up or down, I'm fine with that. It's okay to throw darts on uh, earnings plays. I, I truly have just acknowledged that earnings plays are just throwing darts. So if you guys want to do a couple, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Hey, thanks for the uh, conversation topics, folks. Appreciate you. Um, let's just see what happens. Keep an eye out there. Don't try, try, try not to let our bias get involved. The, my bias has kept me basically from trading this first month completely, uh, let alone the last month of last year. So I, I'm just trying to ignore that, set it aside. I've got my opinions, obviously. You guys have to listen to them. I apologize. However, I just have to trade that market. And once I see any sort of movement outside of this event, I'm just going to start loading up uh, in the direction that I see it go and keep it simple, stupid, right? All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining and participating. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye, guys.